G'day and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at my 1984 Unimog 1700L. I'm going to be fitting a digital type speedo to it, aftermarket speedo. Um, these things are renowned for having speedos from the factory that are quite a nice gauge but the cable that drives them uh, causes problems and breaks. Uh, mine's all still working but the gauge itself uh, does bounce around a little bit at lower speeds and I have had issues with the cable in the past uh, where you know, I've had to lube it up um, it had jammed up at one stage uh, this is the first video that I've done like this in this format a um, bit of inspiration from Diesel Creek Matt over in America other side of the world shout out Matt if you do happen to see this um, we'll see how we go with it uh, hopefully someone will find this uh, informative and useful I'll give you a quick walk around of this thing before we get started. So we said 1984, uh, it's Australian Army. Uh, this particular vehicle uh, was based down in Perth, Western Australia. Uh, its last posting was at 13 Sisby, which is a support brigade uh, part of the Australian Army. Uh, it's got roughly 120 to 150,000 kilometres on it, depending on what you believe in the logbook. Speedo's been replaced a couple of times um, in its life, uh, and that is recorded in the log, which is nice. So the logbook here. Pretty lucky to have this. A lot of these uh, don't come with these. Uh, logbooks, especially uh, later in the the sell-off for these. A lot of them are missing their logbooks, so uh, pretty good service history and everything written in there. Uh, you can see here, here's an example: speedo replaced. I did record the kilometres, um, so I'm hoping that uh, when I put the new speedo in, I'll be able to program it up, work it out where it's at at the moment, program it up, and. Uh, get pretty close to the factory K's on the new Speedo. Here's the existing Speedo, a pretty nice looking VDO gauge. Um, speedo itself I don't believe is the issue, more than likely it's the cable, um, although like I said this one has been replaced a couple of times by the Australian Army. You see the K's on there, Pretty low K's, obviously only done 10,000 since that was replaced last. Like I said, I think it equates to about 140,000. I'll look at it later and when we're programming the new one up, we'll uh, have a look at it and work it out then. I'll give you a bit of a review of the rest of the interior here. It's pretty stock, I haven't done anything much to it at all at this stage. Um, I have fitted up a Victron battery monitor you can see there, which monitors the starting batteries. And I have replaced the factory generator, 100 amp hour, sorry, 100 amp, 24 volt factory generator with a 100 amp, 24 volt alternator. And the reason I've done that is just to get a bit more room under the bonnet so I can fit air conditioning. I don't know, a bit of a look at what we get in the kit. So you get the placement gauge there. Pretty nice, 140 millimeter. Connectors on the back there. Made it look a little bit like a VDO, I think. Uh, a bit of a rip-off of VDO. Not quite sure what brand. Did source this stuff through Mog Central in Australia. Not affiliated in any way. the speed sender unit. Looks to be pretty nice quality. Nice finish there on the aluminium. Couple of connectors there. 
uh, one for the power for the unit and one for the uh, signal from the sender unit. Uh, also cable which comes pre-terminated with the correct plug on it for the sender unit and then the other end uh, you need to put the need to put that plug on ourselves when we do that so yeah. assuming there'll be plenty of length there to run through from the gearbox uh, to the dash. Oh, so I'll be looking underneath, looks like it's going to be easier to get to the speedo cable if we take the spare wheel off. Uh, so I'm going to head and do that now. So interestingly, there's a reduction gearbox. Um, it might not be a reduction, it might actually. Either way, there's a gearbox there uh, on the speedo cable. So that's interesting. I wonder if we can take that out when we fit our sender and make the whole thing just a bit more reliable, one less moving part. Let's see how we go, we'll get a spanner onto that. There we go, chalk a feather on that. There's that uh, gearbox. Interesting. Sort of a ratio it's got on it, but. There's a part number or not, I don't know. There we go. Righto, new send up. Let's get that bolted in. Just got to line the uh, the drive that comes out of the gearbox there. Transfer case gearbox, one unit on this. Just line that little flat up into the groove on the sender. And I don't think my spanner is going to fit on there. I'm trying to find something that does. with the Unimog in the toolkit. I'll put the other thing on the base. I'll point it in the way. 
Ich habe nicht mehr gesehen, dass ich das So I've just followed the original speedo cable, come through the firewall here. Um, managed to push that through as well, wasn't too tight. Surprising, we might just have just the right amount there of cable. See so yeah, how we go. I'll go back and neaten all that cabling up uh, at the end once we've wired it in. So I got that through. Um, yeah, don't worry about this. This is uh, this broke on uh, on me a couple of years ago, and I've just used a bit of uh, Velcro to hold that back on there. I realise it is a vent, um, and you can buy replacement ones of those. So. The cable's just too short here, so I'm just going to go back and fish out a little bit more from what we've already wired through. Aha! A clue. That's how that little that little pin goes. Go and sort that out. Right back under here. This little guy goes in here. Something. Mm. Here's the wiring diagram, it's readily available from the uh, MOG Central website. Uh, there's also instructions in this document for the specifications, uh, programming of it, etc. I'll pop a link in the description for this. So we're going to get to work now wiring this up. I'll start by terminating the uh, sender cable and then uh, find some power in the dash and do some wiring in there, pull the old gauge out and go from there. I had to take to these with the uh, with the bench grinder a bit, just take a bit of meat off them, um, so they'll fit down beside the cowling. This has a has a lip on the back of it, um, and these wouldn't quite clear it. So, just taking a bit off that edge there uh, shouldn't affect the operation at all, uh, but it will make them fit a bit nicer. of not modifying the vehicle too much um, and cutting off plugs etc what I've done is just made up this little adapter these spade connectors will go into the original uh, plug that's behind the dash that came out of the original gauge 
and uh, these uh, new connectors that I put on here will go into the white connector, plug into the back of the gauge and provide power. So I'll pop these into the white connector now, connect it all into the original plug and see if it's working. So it looks like it's all lighting up, no worries at all. Um, just uh, go through the programming in a moment and check that out. Uh, in behind here, you can see the little adapter lead that I've made up going into the adapter lead I've made up going into the original connector there, uh, all working nicely. So I'll button this all up and then I'll bring you back in for the programming part of it. Okay, right, so programming. Uh, this all generally starts with the key off. We hold down the middle button and turn the key on and we keep holding the middle button until we get the menu displayed on the screen. So for this particular one, if we want to set the speed ratio, um, we now have to put in the password. Now we do that by counting up using the right button and then moving uh, across using the left button. Password for these is 1410. So one, four, one, zero, and then press the middle button. Now, as you can see here, I've got it set it to 8,500. That's where I'm gonna start. The book that I've got here from uh, Mog Central says that that's a good starting point um, for these size tires. So we'll see how we go with that. I'll go and set it with the GPS later. Uh, if we do wanna change it, then um, you use the same number uh, configuration to do make those changes. So um, we can zero it out back to zero and then set eight, oh, we've gone too far, eight, five, zero. Obviously we don't need to press that one, zero, and then that sets it. Uh, so if you wanna program the mileage, uh, same process to get to this point, we need to put the um, the password in, so one, four, one, zero. Okay, now at this point, this is where it's a little bit weird. This is where you'll actually put a menu number in. So the menu number for setting the mileage um, is number seven. So what we do is we clear this until we get to one digit, and then we'll press through to number seven, and then press the middle button, and then that will take us so we can set our mileage. I've obviously already set it, I worked it out from the book, um, a couple of times that the speedo has been replaced plus the K's that were on the one that I've just pulled out. I've added them all together and uh, that's what I came up with. So 135,902 kilometres. So assuming that the speedos weren't broken for too long before that they were replaced by defence, um, fairly low mileage, which most of these were. They didn't do a great deal of work in their uh, 30 year service life. Um, or thereabouts. So yeah, to change this, same as all of the other methods, um, we just go through and till it's uh, zero and then we can start programming our numbers in. So one, three, five, nine, zero, two. Once we've got it as we want it there, just noting the decimal point, we'll press the middle and that will bring us back to the start, the main menu. If we press it again and then again, it will exit out of the menu. Uh, you might find that when you first program in the mileage, you'll get some, um, the 100, uh, the last three digits here will be programmed into the odometer automatically, um, into the trip meter, I should say, automatically. Um, you can obviously just reset that by holding the middle button will reset that. Um, the other menu options, I won't go into it here, but the other menu option is number eight, which will allow you to set the overspeed buzzer by default, seems to be set to 110, um, which you're doing pretty well with this uh, machine with the standard ratios if you get into 110.
Well, that's it, it's all done. So I'm it for a run, all tests out okay. It uh, looks like I had to set the frequency to about 7400. Um, that'll depend on the tyre size you've got. I just use trial and error for working through that. Uh, thanks very much for sticking around to the end. Um, if you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up down the bottom. And uh, if you feel inclined, also subscribe to the channel. Just starting out, so your help's really appreciated. Thanks very much, and we'll catch you in the next one.